Hey there guys, it's me Don Gamer, and I'm back again to highlight a news story. Now, if you've been following the gaming news at all this week, you've probably heard that Zynga has been going on a massive layoff. 520 employees are facing it, and that's 18% of their total workforce. They're closing offices in Los Angeles, New York, and Dallas. That's been around everywhere, you don't need me to tell you about that. What I want to tell you about is a person, a former OMG Pop employee, the guys who worked on the Drawing Something games, who was also, their company was bought by Zynga, had this to say when he got hit with the news about layoffs. Quote unquote, Most layoffs are sad. You imagine big corporate settings where security is there to lead people out of the office so they don't make a scene. This was the opposite. So yeah. According to this article, apparently they weren't very surprised at the idea that they were going to get laid off. They kind of knew it was coming. And, to be honest, they seemed kind of happy, using lines like, It was like the weight had been lifted off our shoulder, that a decision had finally been made final. Oh, and the fact that he also goes on later to say, Music was being played loudly and people were ripping up Zynga hoodies and t-shirts. Anything that was Zynga was completely left there. The sentiment felt pretty positive. So, it's sad that these people have lost their jobs, but according to this article, that most of them were kind of happy that it happened. They were looking for a new future, they were tired of working on just maybe the draw some things, or maybe they wanted to do more, but Zynga just kept pushing them down. They're saying that later on, near the end of their, uh, n before their termination or their layoffs, that basically all they were doing was just doing bug fixes for draw something too, and they didn't have anything else on the horizon, so, eh, at least now they'll be able to go their separate ways, or maybe come together and make a new studio, and be able to work on the projects that they truly want to work on. But all I can say is, I, uh, it's, it's hard, even in a shitty situation like that, it's hard losing a job, and as someone who wants to become a game designer, I guess I should take something away from this, that it's hard to lose a job, but on sometimes it's some, it can sometimes just be a blessing in disguise. So, best of luck to all the people at OMG Pop. Hopefully you'll find your dream projects somewhere in the nether realm. And one more thing I want to highlight is this isn't really a news story. It's just a really interesting blog post. It's called Gaming the System, How Gamification Offers a Better Learning Experience. Yeah, it, it's an article just basically um, explaining how to use gaming as a way of education. Now, but there is one thing I want to highlight in this article that I find really interesting. It goes, and if NVIDIA's predictions are right, and the next generation of smartphones and tablets will outperform this generation of consoles, better titles with more immersive experience will lure additional potential gamers. Now, that, that astonishes that there is, we live at a time where my cell phone and my tablet might be as strong as my Xbox 360, PS3, and might be I don't know, could be as strong as, say, my PS4 or Xbox One. That, that's astounding, coming from, say, oh, I don't know, seven years ago. So, two thousand and six. About seven years ago, where I still had my flip phone, and I thought that was the hottest thing ever. I mean, it could go on the internet for, like, five minutes, and you could text, and you could call people, and you could play a very poor version of Pac-Man, but... That was about it. Now we have cell phones that you could like, you have cell phones that like a common person could do a simulation of an airstrike. You have cell phones that you can play games in reality with, AR. And now people are using it as a, as a teaching tool to teach certain things to people using games. Also highlighted in this article is how um, Autodesk 3ds Max, a 3D animation software, uses game logic as a way to like teach you how to use the program and allure you into buying it you know having like a leaderboard with gaining points and i think that's really cool because i think that's a great way to teach someone how to use this very very hard project by giving them some sort of competition level now i don't know if there's any sort of benefit of going on to the leaderboard and i probably won't because I might try the trial, but buying the product, it's about $3,500. I, I, I don't have that kind of bank. But I find it really cool that they're using this sort of, like, 
a leaderboard status as maybe a way of teaching people how to use it faster and what they could do with it. It really unlocks creati creativity through competition. So I think that's really cool. I would give the full article a read because I'm not doing it justice. Anyway, guys, thank you all for listening, and I promise I will have a camera really soon, and I'll probably have a video up explaining who the heck I am. But anyways, if you like this video, by all means, give me a thumbs up or down, tell me how I did, and, you know, leave a comment below. Until next time, I'm Don, C I'm Don Gamer. Later.